The Letter Perfect Hostess, weeknights at 7.30. Now, Mike Schneider, Michelle Marsh, Wonder Wolf, Dr. Frank Field, and the Channel 2 News team. This is Channel 2 News at 11. Everything you need to know, because anything can happen in New York. Hello, Michelle Marsh is off tonight. Bree Walker is joining us. He was murdered exactly one week ago, and tonight police say they have cracked the case, found the men responsible for the cold-blooded killing of Officer Edward Byrne. Four men are being held by police at this hour. Channel 2's Brian Williams is at Queens Criminal Court tonight, where the suspects are to be arraigned. Brian? As you said, four being held by police at this hour, and as we go on the air, three of the four are being arraigned. Two of the four are actually appearing in the courtroom behind us. There is a camera in the courtroom situation allowed. The problem is we can't get pictures to you yet. It is only allowed under certain special conditions. When we're given the green light to take pictures of the arraignment, we can only show the suspects from the neck down because of uh, identity problems. Again, two of them are in court right now. A third is waiting in the wings. Uh, his attorney asked the court if that would be all right. He didn't want to appear before our cameras. A fourth suspect is, Ill in the, is still in the questioning phase, still being talked to by police. All of the arraignments tonight coming on a day when police finalize the investigation rounded up and told us that they had four suspects. Police had described him as their chief suspect, also as the trigger man. They believe 19-year-old Todd Scott fired the gun and took the life of rookie police officer Edward Byrne. Three shots hit and killed Byrne as he sat in a squad car watching the home of a witness in a drug case. I believe the message that they were trying to get across is that you are locking up drug dealers in our geographic area of control and that we're going to take out a symbol of the people that are making the arrest. Suspect number two, 24-year-old Scott Cobb. Police believe he drove the car to and from the murder scene a week ago. Then at midday today, a third suspect gave himself up to police. He's identified as David McClary of Queens, described by police as an accomplice. And tonight, a fourth suspect, a fourth arrest, a man already in police custody on another charge, identified by police as 22-year-old Philip Copeland of Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Police say he was in on the planning of the murder of Officer Byrne, but was not at the murder scene. Police say they moved in on suspects Scott and Cobb while they were inside a basement apartment in Hollis, Queens. The suspects were transported under heavy police protection, those watching reacting with relief, laced with anger. Being that my brother's a New York City cop, if it happened to him, I don't want to shoot them. I hope to God, like I said, that they pass, that they bring back the death sentence. We have a message for the drug dealers. We will, not, we will spare no expense to track down anyone who threatens or injures a police officer, a witness, a juror, or anyone who is trying to preserve the peace in this great city. All four suspects will apparently be held over. Authorities have been saying all along the charges against all four would include murder in the second degree, along with some other ancillary charges, including the possession of a firearm for one. Uh, again, Scott Cobb and Philip Copeland are the two choosing to appear here, one by choice staying away, one still in the system for questioning. Grand jury proceedings will start up in the death of Officer Byrne, we are told, possibly as early as Monday. That's it from here right now. Okay, Brian, thank you. Tonight, New York City's emergency medical service is in critical condition itself. EMS workers staged a massive sick out today, leaving many ambulances parked instead of rolling. It's a one-day protest that's already cost workers two days' pay, and for some, their jobs. But as Channel 2's Reggie Harris reports, some workers believe it was worth the risk. I'm homesick because I'm sick. That was the party line tonight for EMS personnel being checked by doctors at Goldwater Hospital on Roosevelt Island. The checkups were part of the city's response to a sick out by EMS workers who want to be paid the same as firefighters and police officers. Half of the EMS day shift and 40% of the night shift called in sick today. Before getting to the hospital, this man got the call saying he had already been fired by the mayor. They told me to report to duty or... Uh... <clears throat> I would be terminated, and then when I spoke to my lieutenant, he says it was too late, and that, as for Mayor Koch, we've already been terminated, all provisional employees. The decision to fire at least 45 provisional EMS workers, people who have been hired but are not yet certified civil servants, was made tonight at a city hall meeting. The mayor made the decision, his deputy announced it. Those who uh, engage in the job action who are provisionals, they will be terminated with the right to reapply 
in 60 days. There is nothing the union can do legally to help those who've been fired because provisional employees can be dismissed without cause. Bresnoff also said that 58 probationary EMS workers who called in sick will have their probations extended for 60 days. I think the real tragedy here is that the, uh, the mayor of the city of New York has sent a signal to everyone here in this city that the emergency medical service is not a career opportunity. Even before the workers knew officially that some of them would be fired, they were worried about it. You have your car, you have your apartment, you have your bills, you have your whole life. If you lose your job, what are you? You'll be homeless. I think it's worth my job. Getting paid 20000